All right, everyone. Um, this is our first set of notes on protein synthesis. So remember, I mentioned in class today to uh, start by watching this video here, protein synthesis. Uh, give you a visual before starting into the notes. <clears throat> so before we go any further, I just want you to think about this, and um, you can you can pause the video and see what you can come up with and then start the video and I'll show you the list. But we've examined a number of processes that go on inside of cells. Can you think of some of those that we've discussed to date so far? Well, hopefully you stopped, gave it a thought. Maybe you came up with some and maybe you just stared blankly at the screen. But hopefully you thought of some uh, biochemical processes like cellular respiration, cell transport, including facilitated transport or endoexercytosis, active transport. Uh, within the cell cycle and reproduction, we talked about biochemical processes like mitosis and meiosis. And now we're moving into big one, protein synthesis, major biochemical process occurring in our cells, right? Some might say it's the biochemical process, since all other activities in the cell are either directly or indirectly involved with protein synthesis, right? So if you think about it, all of these um, topics that we discussed up here as biochemical processes all require proteins and enzymes in order to occur. So protein synthesis is the be-all, end-all, because it's responsible for making all the proteins that carry that out. Right. In class, we uh, went through this and just kind of talked about uh, the basic process, and that is that um, protein synthesis occurs in two stages. The first stage called transcription. This occurs in the nucleus, and essentially there our DNA, uh, which represents the code, the genetic code, right, is transcribed into a molecule of mRNA. This molecule of mRNA consists of codons, which are essentially triplets of nucleotides. And then that mRNA molecule will then pass through a nuclear pore, and it may end up in the endoplasmic reticulum or in the cytoplasm itself. I mean, ultimately, both occur <clears throat> in the cytoplasm, whether it's in the endoplasmic reticulum or simply a ribosome free-floating in the cytoplasm. This is where step two occurs, which is translation. And this is the process by which mRNA is rewritten into a protein of amino acids. So that's the overview. Keep in mind, two steps. Transcription occurs in the nucleus. Translation occurs in the cytoplasm and mRNA is converted into a protein. Okay, two key stages in protein synthesis. First, transcription. And second, translation. And each has a series of steps to them, not unlike DNA replication. So we had steps one, two, and three in uh, DNA replication, and we have the same thing going on here. We've got three steps to transcription, three steps to translation, um, and you're going to need to know the names of the steps, the location where they're occurring, and the function of each along with the enzymes responsible. So our first step in protein synthesis, transcription. So here we're going from DNA into mRNA. Where does this occur? Well, it occurs in the nucleus right? And um, ultimately what we're looking at here is literally the DNA molecule is providing the information to make a strand of mRNA, okay? So first off, the first step in transcription is called initiation. So remember, I said you need to know the names, locations, and function of each process along with the enzymes first step is called initiation. So what's happening here is this specialized enzyme, RNA polymerase. Now think about that. If you remember, DNA replication used the enzyme 
DNA polymerase because it was making a strand of DNA. This is called RNA polymerase because we are making a strand of RNA, specifically mRNA, right? Specifically mRNA, so hence the name RNA polymerase. It's important to recognize that DNA is always copied on the same strand. So copying is done on what we call the template strand, and that template strand is the from uh, from the three prime end always. Okay, I want you to stop the video and see if you can think of why. Okay, so look at uh, over here. I've just drawn a, a double strand of DNA, and here's our three prime. And so what I want you to think about, if I was building a, an mRNA strand off of the three prime end, that means my first nucleotide would be a U, my next one would be a G and a C, and then over here I would have a G and then an A and an A. Now, what would happen if I was building that mRNA strand off the five prime end? Here I would have an A and then a C and then a G and then a C and then a U, and then a U. These would not be the same strand of mRNA. This would lead to a different set of amino acids and a different protein. So hence why copying is always done on the template strand starting at the three prime end. The process begins by the enzyme RNA polymerase, which attaches to the beginning of the gene at a location called a promote, promoter site. So this is a very specific sequence, specific sequence, unique to the start of each gene, or to the start of genes. And that signals where the RNA polymerase would attach. So right here, highlighted in yellow, we have this promoter sequence, RNA polymerase attaches to that, and unlike DNA replication, RNA polymerase does it all. So it's going to literally unzip, but it's not unzipping from, you know, one end of the DNA strand, it's unzipping at the location of a gene, right? And uh, so it attaches, and that's initiation, right? Attachment of RNA polymerase and starting to unwind the DNA. Second step is elongation. And like I said, RNA polymerase does it all. So elongation is going to involve unzipping the DNA double helix. And um, then it's going to involve uh, facilitating Complementary base pairing, right? Complementary base pairing between RNA nucleotides and the DNA code and the DNA nucleotides. And everything is the same in terms of complementary base pairing, with the exception that U replaces T, right? And so you can sort of see here, um, highlighted down below, is our genetic code. And in red, it's showing our um, RNA strand. And so you've got a T here, which produces an A in the RNA strand, an A here produces a U in the RNA strand, and there's your complementary base pairing, right? Here's our strand of mRNA that's forming, and so that's highlighted here in yellow, and that's elongation. It just continues down, building this strand of mRNA until it reaches a certain section on the DNA strand in which it is signaling a stop. So termination um, occurs when uh, RNA polymerase 
and I could have added this here, I guess, but occurs when RNA polymerase reaches a specific sequence of DNA nucleotides. And oftentimes that specific sequence is followed by what's called a polyadenylated tail. What that means, so polyadenylated, just means a section of DNA with a whole string of A's. Right? And that leads to termination. Essentially causes RNA polymerase to detach. RNA polymerase detaches from DNA. All right, and at that point, we're left with a strand of mRNA. Now, before that mRNA heads off to the cytoplasm, there's a process of mRNA or mRNA processing that occurs, which is essentially an, an editing of uh, essentially extraneous sections. So if you remember when we started talking about DNA and I was throwing out some facts, about 2% of our DNA codes for proteins. And so often there are sections within that DNA, within this gene, there may have been sections that are referred to as exons. Um, and so these, uh, or sorry, introns. And so these introns contain irrelevant information and they have to be spliced out and literally referred to as a spliceosome. So uh, an editing of extraneous sections. So introns are removed from the mRNA and exons simply spliced together, creating the final product. And this becomes our final mRNA. And that's it. From there, tomorrow we'll finish off going through the process of translation. Okay. Uh, again, it's a lot when you consider DNA replication and you've got to know the three steps. Now we've got protein synthesis. We need to know translation and the three steps. And then tomorrow we'll talk about, uh, sorry, transcription and the three steps. Tomorrow we'll talk about translation and the three steps. Thanks very much.